sales differ, the winners here could be just about anyone. This level handicap class race boat for boat, though there are slight differences between each of the yachts. At the recent championships, the top ILC-40s were New Zealand's Mean Machine and Germany's Pinta. The largest yachts in the event, the Big Boat Division, races under a handicap system to try to level the playing field. Now over to our commentator, Eddie Warden-Owen. The opening race of the Champagne Mum Admirals Cup, always a difficult race with lots of marks and currents, testing the tacticians and the navigators. There's Coram Indulgence, she has a lot of local knowledge in a brisk southwesterly breeze as the boat start, slightly overcast. Good start by Bradamante at the bottom of the picture, the small boat next to Mean Machine of New Zealand. But she's boxed in and she'll have to tack away. She's got a few boats to dip, there she goes. She's tacking onto port. Having to dip a few boats that are quite late for the start. One of those is the American boat, Flash Gordon. Very late, even at this point. A good start in a race like this is very, very important. But on the left-hand side of the picture, the best boat out of the start is Pinta, followed by the Australian boat, Gnet, MK Cafe just behind the red boat. At the other end of the line is Easy Oars and Indulgence. They've done well. And of course, in the Solent race, the tactics of the tide and where you go are so important. Coram Indulgence having to tack away. And the German boat Rubin decides to tack on top of her. Flash Gordon tacking. The Americans behind numbers, halfway up the first beat. And this is the Mum 36 from America, Jameson. Look how those guys are having to hike hard to keep the boat upright. Easy Oars and Mean Machine doing well as they come to the windward mark. This is Flash Gordon approaching the top of the first beat. And first at the windward mark is the New Zealand boat, Numbers. Russell Coots, America's Cup winner, sailing to form. Second and a considerable way behind, that's Flash Gordon of America. Third, Ragamuffin of Australia, and close behind Ragamuffin, doing well at this stage in the race. That's Coram Indulgence, the yellow boat. A lot of current taking them from right to left in the picture. Notice how the German boat Rubin has sailed well past the mark, the tide carrying them to the left, losing valuable space and distance to the boats ahead. Ruben hoisting a spinnaker as they start the first run, sailing with the wind behind them. And she's ahead of the Italian boat Medina, the last of the big boats as they reach the first mark. And well up with the big boats, the ILC 40s, Pinta and Ginette, they're the boats that had the best starts at the left-hand side of the starting line, with Ginet just getting inside Pinter. Easy oars rounding in third, just ahead of MK Cafe. And Mean Machine getting inside of MK Cafe, who underestimates the strength of the tide. Spinnaker's going up as they sail down into the current, down to the leeward mark. Bringing up the rear is King Harold of Norway, sailing his ILC 40. Very competitive and he enjoys his sailing. And at the top mark for the Mum 36 class, look how closely they're bunched. It shows the advantage of one design sailing. And it's Breeze for Italy ahead of the Germans, bringing up the rear of the Americans in Jameson. But it's a good day for the British, with Bradamante and Coram Indulgence using their local knowledge to advantage.
in Big Bergstein, an excellent day for Germany's Ruben, second for Quorum Indulgence, and the much fancied numbers fourth. ILC 40 more success for Germany with Pinter, a solid start for Australia, but no success for Britain. The Type 1 Design 136 class goes to Italy, an excellent second for Merricks and Walker. Overall, it's Germany starting well, Great Britain, Italy, and the United States tied on 13.75 points. Race 2, another breezy affair in the Solent, just off the Royal Squadron line. That's Investor making a very punchy start at the right-hand side of the line, just above Bradamante. The fleet are sailing around a Solent course once again. It's a test of local knowledge and putting the navigators and tacticians under a lot of pressure. Wind up to about 15, 18 knots. Quorum Indulgence in the foreground showing that she's got the match of all the big boats very well up at this point. Brava of Italy in the middle of the picture and Coram having to sail below the big boat from Australia, Ragamuffin, because Ragamuffin has right of way. Looking out for the other boats. This is Breeze, the Italian Mum 36. And Brava Q8 from Italy, the ILC 40. That has been to the Admiral's Cup before. Numbers from New Zealand. Skipper Russell Coots dipping behind the big boat from America, Flash Gordon. And ahead of Flash Gordon is Medina of Italy. These boats are all very close together as they sail up to the first windward mark. Bradimanti from Britain doing very well. John Merricks and Ian Walker in their first Admiral's Cup. Numbers has caught up and passed Medina of Italy. She'll have to tack away from the deflected wind of Numbers. There she goes. And Numbers has also past Flash Gordon, we can see on the right of the picture. But at the windward mark, Flash Gordon has got back into the lead. Very shifty today. And she's closely followed by the Italian boat, Medina Milano. First in the ILC 40s, it's the German boat, Pinter. And she's followed by G-Net of Australia and then MK Cafe representing America. Once again, the MUM 36 is a well bunched with Georgia Express of New Zealand first. Look at Bradamante, struggling to lay the windward mark. Make sure she doesn't hit it. Nice rounding by John Merricks as they round third. Quorum Indulgence bagging the Genoa on the foredeck. Look at the concentration on Pinter by the helmsman, Karol Jablonski. Concern on numbers that the hinging mast might be too far forward. Look how slack is that force day. They must be concerned that the mast might be damaged. As we come to the leeward mark, Brava from Italy in all sorts of trouble. Spinnaker down, jib should be up. This is not going to help her cause. Easy oars of Great Britain having a very good race. And the wind strength is increasing as they come to the bottom mark. This is Georgia Express, the first Mum 36. And a spinnaker's gone over the bow. And she's in all sorts of trouble. The spinnaker pulls still up as she jibes. Brava of Italy has sorted her problems out as she tacks to go up the second windward leg. Medina Milano of Italy, she's tacking. Very strange. What is she doing at the top mark? Is she doing a penalty? Doesn't look happy, the four stay slack. And she's sailing straight towards Ragamuffin of Australia. That's a collision. And the boom's coming across. Heads down. That's a very bad accident. Hope nobody was injured. And from here, it looks as if they've broken their steering. They're retiring and going home. Basically, we broke uh, the steering cable, so the boat uh, came uh, head up to wind and then attack, bore off again, and the uh, jibe inside another boat that was coming in. It was a big problem, and uh, actually, in the bad luck, it could have been uh, worse, let's say. And luckily, the boat uh, was able to turn inside. 
Otherwise, I think the damage could have been uh, worse. There's a hole in the side and uh, a lot of scuffing down one side and uh, uh, life rails and pull bits torn off. We had a second in the first race. Uh, and then uh, in the second start, we won the start on the pin end and that was general recalled. And then we actually had, ended up winning the race um, on the water. But we've just got ashore and we've just found out that the whole fleet actually sailed the wrong course. Um, the bottom leeward mark there, we went round to port, which seemed to be the logical thing to do, um, instead of completely hooking right round it to starboard. Race two, big boats, and Flash Gordon beats Quorum Indulgence into second place. LC40 and Germany's Pinter rises to the top. Jeanette nets second, Easy Oars features at last. New boys Merricks and Walker take the small class from New Zealand and the United States. So overall, Germany still leads the way. The USA tops Great Britain. The Antipodes follow ahead of Italy. Join us after the break for more team competition in the Champagne Mum Admirals Cup. We out checks before the first of the offshores, the Channel Race. The worried faces before the 200 mile challenge belong to the navigators. It's different because, I mean, there is so much tide here. There is so much current and we tend to go on quite interesting courses to different places, so yeah, it's it's different to say uh, sailing in Hawaii or something like that, which is uh, you know a slightly different test. This is a real navigation and tactics test. Well, navigation in the traditional sense of the word is kind of disappeared. The navigator just to tell you where you are and the course the next mark, but now the uh, navigators are quite uh, tactically oriented trying to figure out when different weather patterns are going to come in and what effect they have. So it's a, it is a big strategy race. Um, well, it's very different to a lot of other channel race courses. We're not actually going out into the channel itself at all. Normally there's a, a midpoint mark in the channel. Uh, all these boys, although he set three marks that he's actually going to put a boat, put an anchor down and a, a a boy down rather than send you around a navigational mark. Not quite sure where they are, but they may be a little bit more off the coast. But all the actual things like Pool Fairway, Nav Tower, um, Needles Fairway are all coastal marks. So we're going to be racing up and down the coast for the next 24 hours rather than out into the channel itself. So an interesting channel race course has been set that essentially uses Pool and Christchurch Bay and a couple of laid marks out in the channel. And at the start, we have uh, 12 to 18 knots of breeze. The boats spread out along the line set off the Royal Yacht Squadron. And there are a couple of boats over the line. At the starboard end of the line, it looks like Omen and the Australian boat, the Australian Mum 36 c They're going to have to go back. But at the other end of the line, it's Medina of Italy. Just to leave with a flash guard. There goes C. She's having to return back to the line. And the boat on the left of the picture is Bradamante. She's made an excellent start ahead of the ILC 40 Mean Machine and the larger boat, Corum Indulgence. In the center of the picture with the boots, that's the navigator David Howlett. He knows the Solent like the back of his hand and will surely help in the local knowledge. The race over 200 miles demands a lot of stamina and concentration. There's a navigator on Pinter with a chart in his hand. He probably doesn't know where he's going. On Medina Milano, they know where they're going. They've got Mark Chisnell, who's Solent based. He knows the strong tides and currents, which have a great effect, as you can see here. They have a great effect on the performance of the boat. As they sail out of the Solent, the boats are tightly bunched, hanging out as far as they can on Bradamante to keep the boat upright. And they're very close to the American boat, Jameson. Arrows, the big boats, Gordon just ahead. This is what is Corum Indulgence, which makes a big difference. Chris Law heading out to the right-hand side. He can see that there's more current to the right because there's more disturbed water. And this is where the current is traveling at its fastest. Two and a half to three knots of tide. And in this 50 knots of breeze, it's getting quite choppy. The choppier it gets, 
the more current there is. In the ILC 40s, Mean Machine is taking the lead as they prepare for a, a wet ride out through the Needles Channel. And Breeze up there with the top Mum 36. But the leading big boat as they go out to the Needles Channel is Numbers, the New Zealand boat. On board with Chris Law, Forum Indulgence tacking. Genoa trimmer winding in the Genoa. All the crew getting on the weather rail. This is Brava Q8 and she's behind Easy Oars. They sail out through the rough water. As I said, the rougher the water, the more the current. G-Net of Australia, full old skins and it's not even blowing very hard. Just think what the conditions be like if the wind was strong. The Polish boat, MK Cafe, sailing for America. John Colius, the helmsman. Tommaso Kieffi pounding through the waves on the Italian Mum 36 breeze. And all three boats are very close together as they sail out into Christchurch Bay. The wind dies overnight and all the boats come into the finish at the pool fairway buoy. First by a comfortable margin in the big boat division is Medina Milano. MK Cafe leads Easy Oars into the finish but she's passed by G-Net of Australia and the British boat finishes third. Georgia Express wins the Mum 36 class. Light conditions suit Italy's Medina in the big boat. Numbers start to climb. Quorum Indulgence drops back. USA's MK Cafe tops the ILC 40s and unlucky Easy Oars loses a place on the line. More success for Bradamante. Germany's Epunkt records another solid finish. And overall, the USA consolidate their lead over Great Britain with Germany third. Uh, completely shattered, yes. How much sleep have you had? Uh, none really, I don't think I dozed off a couple of times, but got woken up pretty quickly by someone who wanted to know where we were or what was happening or where we were going next. So after a comfortable day's rest, we're off to Christchurch Bay for two windward leeward races for the Coram Trophy. Brisk sailing conditions greet all the boats. Good start by Rubin at the windward end of the line. She has all the boats under control. Good start too by Coram Indulgence. She's down at the leeward end of the line. And Mamma Mia of Scandinavia has to do a penalty. And in so doing, she bends her mast and has to retire from the competition. Coram Indulgence made a great start and is crossing the fleet. Flash Gordon, she's going to have to tack for the New Zealand boat Numbers, because Numbers is the right-of-way boat. Flash Gordon, Numbers, and the Australian boat Ragamuffin are all very close together. The Coram Indulgence has got a big lead. This is only two minutes after the start, and she's already well ahead. Perfect sailing conditions for these boats. 20 knots of breeze and relatively flat water. And leading the RLC 40s is Mean Machine ahead of the Italian boat and the German boat. At the winner mark, numbers, rounds behind Ragamuffin of Australia. You can see the spinnaker going up on the New Zealand boat. Close behind them, Coram Indulgence after her excellent start. At the ILC 40s, it's Brava Q8, just behind the big boat Rubin. She's closely followed by Mean Machine and Pinter just coming into the picture. Crews working frantically to get the spinnaker up. The Mum 36, Bradamante, very close to Breeze. Breeze goes round the inside. Bradamante having trouble with the main sheet. She can't get it to go out. There it is. There she's eased and she's able to bear away. Spinnaker going up very quickly. Nice set on Bradamante. 
Quorum Indulgence on the right hand side of the picture, well up with the leaders as they come round to the bottom mark. But first, the 50 footer from Australia, that's Ragamuffin, followed closely by the, the very light and very fast downwind Quorum Indulgence. Mean Machine has passed Brava Q8 to take the lead in the ILC 40s, and Pinter's also caught up. Whoa, handbrake turn on Brava there. Got a mainsail pinned in, probably caught on the runners. Very lucky not to hit the leeward mark. Georgia Express rounds just behind Breeze. And coming up the second windward leg, a very close tack by Coram Indulgence to Flash Gordon, forcing Flash Gordon to tack away. Good shot from above of the New Zealand boat numbers as she tacks with the crew perfect timing getting on the windward rail. And even Sid Fisher, the man in the white hat on the back of Ragamuffins, getting his weight as far out as possible. It's a good race for the Kiwis. Mean Machine taking the RLC 40 division. Numbers taking the big boat division. And in the Mum 36 class, Italy with Breeze win. Perfect conditions again for race two in Christchurch Bay for the Crawham Trophy. This is a day Dominated by Italy in the second race. The New Zealanders win the first race. And the Italian Mum 36 Breeze, winner of both her races in a class. But the consistency of the Americans with two second places in race one and race two as a team, give them the top position and extend their lead overall after five races. For Britain, it's not a good day. As a team, they finished sixth in the first race with Americks and Walker in Bradamante taking a penalty and the same position in the second race. They lie fourth overall, but the points difference is close and the fastnet is still to come. After five races, USA holds a solid lead. New Zealand come through to second. Germany push Great Britain down to fourth. So a major setback for the British team, but join us next week to find out whether we can claw our way back up the leaderboard. And we'll also be bringing you the world-famous Fastnet race, when all the questions will be answered. <laughs>